Welcome to CGG TV. My name is Alexia and I'm a local singer-songwriter, uh, but I'm also a creative and I love getting into different projects. So today I thought that I would run you through how to tie-dye your own piece of clothing. Um, so before we get started, I'll just run you through a few things that you need to be mindful of. Uh, first up, we need to start with a white article of clothing. Uh, but you want to make sure that this is either 100% cotton or 100% bamboo. Any natural fibre will be perfect. Uh, we want to really be avoiding things like polyester, viscose, um, any synthetic fabrics because the dye just won't take as good to that sort of fabric. Um, you need to make sure that if you've bought a new piece of clothing, um, just give it a run through the washing machine because the dye also won't take as well just because there are chemicals on the outside of the fabric um, So we want to make sure that we wash that out and also before we get started You want to make sure that this article of clothing is damp so not soaking wet wring it out Because when we're folding it, it's best to use damp clothing Especially for that dye to really take to the fabric, which is what we're looking for next up we're going to use rubber bands so if you can get a pack that's got lots of different sizes, I've got some nice big thick ones and some finer ones, which will make really cool circles, hopefully, today. You obviously are gonna need a pack of dye for tie-dyeing. Today I'm using um, indigo, just because I love the color and I wanted to use one single block color, but there are lots of different packs with rainbows and things like that. With the tie-dye dye packs, they come in two forms. You can either add the dye to a bucket of water, which is what we're going to be doing today, or um, the dye comes in a pack with lots of little bottles, so you'd use one colour per bottle. And um, that particular tie dyeing style is awesome if you want to mix colours or create rainbows because you can just use the bottle to pour onto your design and kind of mix colours as you like. Whereas the bucket is, is easier if you're using one tone or dip dyeing. Um, in that pack of tie-dye, usually there is something called soda ash. Basically, that's just like a binding agent and it helps the dye really take to the fabric. Um, it usually comes in a pack with your tie-dye anyways. We want a spoon for mixing, really important, or I mean, you don't have to use a spoon, you can use a stick if you want to, but if you are using a spoon, just make sure that it does not go back into the kitchen because what we use for dyeing, we do not want to use for cooking afterwards. So if you are tie dyeing with your kids, just be mindful that this spoon does not go back into the kitchen for cooking or stirring. <laughs> really important, that one. Uh, next up, some gloves. Um, you do want to get some gloves because your hands will get dyed. Also worth noting that if you are tie dyeing at home, See if you can wear some old clothing or an apron or something because dye sticks, particularly if you're wearing cotton. Um, and it is really easy to splash it onto yourself. So that's kind of a run through of the basics that you need. So first up to get started, I am going to start with the dye, just so that it's got some time to set in the water. And while that's setting, we'll do some folds and some patterns and things and I'll run you through. Um, our design for today. It's not too complicated, so stick with me. So first up, we are gonna add indigo to our bucket of water. I've just got an average size bucket of water. We're gonna tip that straight in. So you can see it's just mixing beautifully in there. Next, we're gonna add our soda ash. I know on some um, videos, it says to soak the fabric in soda ash beforehand but if you're just kind of doing this for fun and you're not getting too serious into it then I'll just go ahead and like add the soda ash in with the dye and this is just another binding agent so as you can see that fully splashed out so you will get dye on, on yourself just a FYI I'm taking my spoon now and I'm just going to gently like mix the dye in with the binding agents in there the soda ash Uh, we're just going to do that for a couple of minutes just to get everything mixed in beautifully in that water. And once that is done, we just kind of let that sit for a bit. So if you're using, you don't have to necessarily be using indigo. Um, if you're using a different dye, you can just mix that in. It may already have the soda ash in the dye, like mixed together. I know that I think Spotlight sell those sorts of dyes where you just like tip the whole packet in. 
Perfect. Easy peasy. Cool. So that's mixed pretty well. I'm just going to go the counter direction and make sure that the bits in the sediment at the bottom have mixed in. And then I'm going to lift the spoon out and just let that set. You ideally want to let the, the dye kind of set and settle for say 20 minutes, but it should take as long as it does to fold your design into your into your t-shirt or your fabric. So it works out in the end, don't get too crazy about it. So for this pattern in particular, I'm sort of winging it um, and hoping for the best, but we're gonna start with a bit of a zigzag fold in the corner. And hopefully what that will look like in the end is some cool streaks in the fabric with the dye sort of in and out of those folds. So we're going to start at the bottom left corner, folding that little corner up and then just zigzagging. You can kind of play around with the width of the fold. I'm just kind of going in, you know, that much of my finger. What's that, like an inch, I guess? And we're just going to keep folding all the way through. So I'm making sure that that fabric is like nice and flat at each fold and really folded well because it's going to give us a really cool pattern. So yeah, just go ahead and do your folds. I'm going to keep going probably to like the middle line of the t-shirt because I'm hoping that it will create um, like a bit of a semicircle design. I guess the beauty of folding it and playing around with the design is like tie-dye is so forgiving. You can have a pretty average design, but it will still look cool because the dye has a way of working um, through the folds. And if you're using rubber bands through the rubber bands where they've blocked the dye going into the fabric. So you should be right. So as you can see, there are some cool folds being created in my fabric. You can kind of see, if I turn on the side there, you can kind of see the ribbons that I've created. So I'm probably going to call it there. That looks about right for me. I've gone up to about halfway in my t-shirt. So now I am going to grab a big rubber band and I'm going to start with the center point is where I started the fold here. And I'm just gonna pinch it and pick it up. And then I'm going to tie this first section with a big rubber band. Now, really important to note that when you are tying with rubber bands, they need to be super tight. So you don't really wanna be able to like see the fabric underneath. It's gotta be so tight that you can hardly push it along if you know what I mean like if you were to do this it should be hard to do we really want to be blocking this section in the fabric so that the dye can't get through there and we can start to create a really cool pattern so this is our first point um, you can even if you feel like that's not tight enough you could even go over with a second rubber band really so now I'm just going to go along again making sure that my folds are still pretty good I mean, yep, they're looking pretty good to me. So now I'm going to go along again and I'm going to fold, uh, sorry, use my rubber band to create another stop around here. A little bit finicky, but like I said, you know, even if it's a bit rough, it will look awesome once the dye has soaked through. Perfect, I'm gonna go over the second just because I want that second one to be really tight and I couldn't get a good grip on that first rubber band. So as you can see, I've got two stops there and pretty much I'm just gonna go along and pop a couple more up towards the sleeves of the shirt. Just being mindful not to actually um, put a rubber band over the sleeves.
perfect does. So we still have created folds. They're just being bunched in and it's getting a little bit wild in there now, but that's pretty much what you're aiming for as we go along. A couple more, I might chuck maybe two more in there. And the cool thing about the rubber bands is that they are going to start creating circles in our pattern. Perfect. And our sleeves are here and here. So I might go maybe a smaller rubber band this time. And I might need to do two of those just because they're so fine. And like you can see, you know, they just are a bit more flimsy. So this is just my design, but you know, if you wanted more or less rubber bands, you just go ahead and do what you want to do. It's all good. And that's the beauty of it. You know, you can get as creative as you want to. If you want to do just one rubber band, perfect. There are some really cool techniques as well. You know, if um, you want to create circles and inside of circles, inside of circles, you can grab things around the house like a rock. You can stick the rock into the fabric and then loop a rubber band on the outside of the fabric around the rock and that will create some really cool interesting shapes. I know that I didn't really have any interesting things to use when I was tie-dyeing once and um, I just got things like connectors on the garden hose and <laughs> like whatever I had around like a spoon you know and you could just tie that around with rubber bands and it, it creates some really quirky really interesting shapes. So fun um, and lastly one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, I've got one more to go. I think that will look good. Yeah, lastly, I just thought I'd play around with a little twist at the back of the neck because most of our, our um, design is along the bottom of the t-shirt. So I thought maybe just to add a little detail near the neckline at the back of the shirt would be kind of cool. Um, but, you know, I'm also experimenting here. So, these are all of our circles that we've created with rubber bands. So, I mean, your t-shirt should sort of look like this, but if it doesn't, it's fine. Just kind of go with it. You never know. You might create something really awesome by breaking the rules, you know. Um, a little bit of creative license. So like I said, I'm just going to do that last little bit. So I'm going to find the back of the t-shirt. Here are my two sleeves. I've made sure not to, to fold them. Um, I'm going to grab the back of the t-shirt here. I'm going to pinch it and then twist the fabric around so that I'm creating a kind of a spiral um, with the back of the shirt there. So in doing this, it's similar to the fold that we've just created, you know, where we've like, we've folded the fabric so that the dye can't get into those creases. The same kind of principle with the twist, except it just is a bit of a different design. So I've pinched the center, I've twisted the fabric around, and hopefully I've created a bit of a spiral here. So I'm just gonna take another rubber band, pinch this whole spiral, and then wrap my rubber band around this spiral. And by rights, I should have a cool spiral, <laughs> but I may not. <laughs> we'll see. Perfect. All right, so we have our spiral at the back, our sleeves, and we've got our different circle points. I might just pop this little bit in there a bit more. Looks great. Perfect. We are ready for dyeing. So I'm just going to go back to my bucket give this a little bit of a stir. It's been sitting for long enough, I'd say, so it's probably perfect and ready to go. Cool, that looks good. All right, this is where you need to put your apron on and you need to put your gloves on because it's gonna get messy, particularly if you have a tie-dye kit that uses bottles. 
um, because those bottles are wild. They'll just like spray everywhere, even if you're being really careful. So I would not wear your favorite clothes. I also would just avoid wearing white if you're dying, just in general, rule of thumb. Even just like getting creative, just don't wear white. Unless you want like quirky dye everywhere, then yeah, totally wear white. Cool guys, so we are going to essentially just plonk this in. I've got a little container here that I'm gonna pop this in and I'll explain after. This is not sponsored by ice cream, by the way. This is just a container I've got laying around. So we're going to take this whole t-shirt, gloves on, apron on, and we're going to dunk it into the dye. Might even just move this along so you can really see what I'm doing here. Cool. So we're going to dunk into the indigo. And we need to hold this in for about maybe two minutes. So I'm just, I'm holding on to it. I'm just kind of swirling it around the bucket, making sure it's submerged in the water but not necessarily letting it go to the bottom of the bucket because the pigment can sometimes rest at the bottom of the bucket, which can create splotches and things like that in your dye, which again, looks kind of cool, but if you're not looking for that kind of design, then I would avoid dropping um, the dye in. So we're using indigo. Um, if this were any other pigment, like terracotta or something cool like that, you just swirl it around. But what makes indigo really interesting and fun as a creative project is once you submerge it in the water, it is sort of this like yellowy green. But once it is brought out of the water, it starts to oxidize and that's when it turns blue. So you can pretty much watch this indigo change color in front of your eyes. It's really cool. So we're gonna give this another, let's say minute, when it's in the bucket, you kind of need to squeeze any air out of the fabric as you've put it into the water, just to make sure that that dye is really getting in and around all of the crevices of the shirt. Perfect. So I'm just kind of squeezing any air bubbles out, really getting that dye into all of the folds. And I think that's just about ready. So you can kind of see I'm bringing it out. It's like a light green color, but just watch. Like this is gonna turn blue. So that's like the really cool thing about indigo is that it has this awesome effect once you've taken it out of the dye bucket. It's changing color colors in front of you, which other dyes don't really do, you know. They turn the color in the bucket and when you take them out, that's sort of it. So generally with other dyes, you, um, you can resubmerge the item back into the dye if you want a darker pigment um, or if you've got multiple things you want to dye just keep those dyeing and generally you need those items to sit overnight or so for about 24 hours let them dry out so give them a squeeze in the dye and then put them out somewhere to dry um, you can put them into a plastic bag um, and just let them dry together in there and that just helps that color to set but from experience do not put multiple items into the same bag if they are different colors because they will start to change color and mix with other colors but if you're dyeing everything the same color from the same bucket then chuck them all into the same plastic bag um, and let them just develop their color um, and the next day you will be ready to, to remove those uh, rubber bands and to give them a cool rinse of water and all those sorts of things which i'll talk to you about next so with the indigo, you can kind of see that it's starting to turn blue. And this takes about 20 minutes. So particularly with indigo, if that's what you're using, in 20 minutes time, we are going to submerge that again because we want to get that really luscious dark blue color. Uh, but you need to give it some time for that um, oxidation process to really happen and for that pigment to really come through the fabric. So 20 minutes time, we're going to dunk that back into the bowl and let that sit uh, for a further 20 minutes. And once that process is over, this is when you need to um, 
put your bucket away. If you're going to reuse it, it can last for a couple of further days. Otherwise, we are going to run this piece of fabric under cool water until the dye starts to turn clear. So the water that runs off the t-shirt begins to change from super dark dye to a little bit more like water. Once we're at that process, we are ready to remove our rubber bands and then chuck our item into the wash. So that's what we're going to do now. Fortunately, I'm super prepared, so I have dyed this same design last night. And we are ready pretty much to reveal what this is going to look like. So I'm going to move this back and clear my space out a little bit. So as you can see here, this is our design with all of our um, rubber bands and things like that. This is essentially after two dyes, it's come out really beautifully blue. It was originally the same t-shirt. It went through the same green to blue process. But if you have a look here, you can even see that just over this past, what, five, 10 minutes, it's really starting to take, take color. So it's super cool, really interesting. Um, so this I have dyed twice, I've let it sit. I've rinsed it with cold water until the water turned clear and now we are ready to remove the rubber bands. So I'm going to be gutted if this doesn't come out properly, but <laughs> let's give it a go. So you can see here I've really doubled up. Yay, look at that. We're going to have a design, guys, so I'm feeling really chuffed. So yeah, super important guys that you have made sure you've, after you've finished dyeing, you've just rinsed this before taking the rubber bands off. You have rinsed this item until the water has started to run clear again. Uh, if you haven't, you're going to get dye on yourself and it's going to stain. And also if you chuck it into the wash, it's going get, to get dye on everything. Uh, just snapped a rubber band and that's going to happen. Just go with it. Cool. So we just need to take all these rubber bands off and sometimes they are hard work but it's going to be worth it. I can already feel that this is going to be a successful project so I'm glad that if you've followed this design um, it's going to be good and most importantly it's going to be something that you actually want to wear. <laughs> Almost there. Oh, this, I guess this is like the catch of using so many rubber bands, you know, is that you've got to take them off. Um, and some die kits, like I said, you let them sit for 24 hours and the, the rubber bands can get super crusty. They're pretty much just snapping when they come off anyways. But if you can, try and preserve them because, you know, you only really need to buy one pack of rubber bands to be able to reuse them and keep going. And like I said, with the die, it can last in that bucket for a couple of further days. So... If you find other clothes around the house that you want to tie-dye, or even sheets can be really cool, pillowcases. I've tied-dyed my baby's clothing um, just for something different. You can reuse that dye um, yeah, for so, so many more items. And if you're using bottles and not a bucket, they, the dye can still sit in the bottles. Um, and you can dilute the dye, you can stretch it further. So once that dye kind of gets to a quarter of the way down, you can top it up with water and just start to dilute the colour. So you'll still, if you used blue for example, you'll still get blue items. They might just be sky blue or really light blue by the end of it, you know. Oh my gosh, check this out. Okay, so we have just removed all of our rubber bands. Um, lots of them there. And this is our tie-dyed shirt. Epic. I'm just looking at this now for the first time and I am stoked with that. Like, you guys can do it. Oh, I've forgotten one. Hang on, here. The back of the neck, you know how we did that twirl? Um, the spiral. Let's see if that even worked. Epic. Yeah, and if you have a tie-dye kit that has lots of different colours, like imagine how cool this design would be if you, you know, poured a bit of yellow and blue and got greens or you did, you know, 
reds in there and created oranges. Like you could just go wild with this thing. Such a cool school holiday project, but also just like fun, cheap activity that you can do at home to kind of repurpose old clothing. Check out the spiral. <laughs> Look, I'm pretty stoked with this in all honesty. I think that it's turned out wicked. Um, so that's pretty much it for me. You have learnt how to tie-dye and if you've used indigo, you've learnt to tie-dye with indigo, but if you're using rainbows, I mean, you could just go wild. And why not, you know, tag the city and let us see some of these cool projects that you guys have been doing. So make sure that you, if you have watched this and you are going to tie-dye, like send us a, a pic in the comments and show us what you've been up to. We'd love to see. I'd love to see if you uh, did it successfully. <laughs> That's pretty much it for me. Thanks for watching CGD TV, guys. I'm Alexia. It's 